We spent a couple of days at the San Su Rapids. Then we continued on towards Good Hope, as you see there. These are what's known as the lower rapids, but we are able to skirt them and thus avoid them. The first site, and Wayne has joined us to help process them. The female, which you see here, is larger than the male. These birds, as you can see, are quite a bit older, which makes it uh, more difficult in terms of timing. You get some young ones, some old ones. In this case, one of them hopped out, so we had to go get it and bring it back in. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. <laughs> Hello, here's my baby. <laughs> These used to be all along the coast, but there's not very many of them anymore. This is the next site, which are about as young as you'd want to get them and still ban them, as opposed to the last site, which are about as old as you'd want to get them and still ban them. This is what is known as the rampart. There's a set of rapids in there, which you'll see in a moment. This is just above Fort Good Hope. And Mackenzie mentioned it in 1792 when he floated down the river and the fact that there were peregrines on these cliffs. We went by these rapids on the east side but uh, then cut across to get some fresh water on the other side of the river. I think these are actually worse than the ones at uh, San Su. We saw the adult here up in a tree and there's the site with the whitewash on the cliff. It's late in the day, so we're just going by noting the location of the sites as we know there's a number on these cliffs and uh, we might band one while Wayne's making supper. After we'd set up camp, we got some visits from some natives who said this was a burial ground and we were on top of it. We asked if they wanted us to move and they said no, just say some prayers. How are you doing there, Chef? While Wayne was making supper, we found and processed this site, which was just above camp. Impressive flying, hard to get, and it almost looks like they're going to hit you. Keith and I went out to do that first site we saw coming into the ramparts. This is our camp right here, and just to the left here is the site we were doing uh, while Wayne was making supper. The one tough thing about these cliffs is it's hard to find a place where you can get up on top, but once you're up there, the walking is relatively easy, although sometimes it's a little bit of a hike. Here I am going to that first site to process the young. And 
processing the young here. This is a nice, easy site. When uh, looking for prey remains, quite often we found a gull, uh, a duck of some kind, sometimes shorebirds, sometimes other passerines. I mentioned the flicker in an earlier shoot. Uh, things like that were fairly typical of most of the sites we checked. It was quite common to see bear scat like this cranberries. Also, blueberries were very common. Wayne made that bread in my father's oven while we were banding. Hey, you might get, you might get up right in this track. This shows why the birds have the coloring that they do. And the site here is right uh, at the base of that tree. So I'm going to climb into it. Right up right here. This stuff is nasty to climb on. Those rocks there are like uh, walking on ball bearings with serrated edges. It's limestone, very sharp. It's also steeper and higher than what the camera shows. And I'm glad we got him along. We wouldn't be banding as many birds. What I've done here is taken a 300 foot rope and just wrapped, uh, put it around a tree so and doubled up going down so that we can pull the edge out and I don't have to climb back up to retrieve it. So you'll see the, the one uh, bob there on my right and the other one's actually on the ledge and I'm not sure it'll reach bottom. This was the most aggressive bird that we had. She brushed me with her wing. She's going to sit on uh, just above me there, and she was actually within a meter of me at one point. And I regretted not having the camera. She she landed right above you, John. There's a fully fledged young one there on the rock. It was too old and too hard to get to, so we just left it be. So you're just going to write that one down and not brand it? That's what's going to happen for now. Unless we get around that corner and find we can hike back to it, then we... Right. There's Fort Good Hope, but we've got another day before we get to it as we've got a lot of sites to check out. This is the most challenging site that I went to. I'm walking across uh, a very steep and uh, fairly high up on the cliff area. To give you an idea how wide that is, look at, think how wide my feet are and look at what I'm uh, standing on there. The video is a little bit shaky. That's because Keith was taking it and he was in the back of the boat, which was uh, bobbing up and down. But still, it gives you an idea of uh, what I went across. Now the reason why I'm walking across like this is because it's much faster. I don't have to go to the top, drop a rope down and perhaps climb back and get the rope. It's not as safe, but I do know what my capabilities are and I made it. This gives you an idea of how far up I was and uh, obviously what would happen if I had made a misstep. I do know what my capabilities are, although interestingly enough, there was another site very similar to this. And I said to Keith, I can get him, but he wouldn't let me go. The green coat there is one of my trademarks, as with the uh, what I call my goofy hat or floppy hat. I wear the hat because it's the best thing to stay on my head when I'm on the water and keep dirt from going down my back. 
The coat there is retired now as it just worn out. Adult uh, bald eagle, and uh, there's the young one which had already fledged. This is a native fish camp. They catch the fish and smoke them. Wayne wanted to buy some smoked fish, so we stopped in for a visit. There you can see some of the smoking, just very slow and easy. All the native camps that we had had those uh, teepee smoke houses that you see there. She's just explaining that the floodwaters pushed their buildings over. There must have been twice as much water in the river then as there is now. For sure. Get this one. And do you want to get some to take for later? For on our travels or what? Fort Good Hope, where we stopped in to get some supplies. I was able to recharge my batteries, literally, plug them in, and download my video to my laptop computer. And uh, then we were on our way. This is actually quite typical of the settlements up there. Lots of boats in there. Just a short road really going nowhere. Shows you how close the forest fires came to town. This is a very famous church. It was completed in 1885. Unfortunately, it was locked, but I thought the cemetery was kind of interesting, so I took a shot of that. John? What? See the fish nets? Oh, yeah. We're just heading out away from Fort Good Hope, but we need to get some fresh water and there was a nice stream coming in, so this is where we got our water from. <laughs> 